Well, I'd like to welcome everyone, and um, and I, I hope everyone had a chance for a bullet chilling. Thank you, Thank you Diana. Diana. <laughs> There's plenty left, so if you guys want any take home, please, please feel free. And so we're going to start as we often do uh, with introductions. So we're going to change that up a little bit and start with the people online. <clears throat> So, CJ, you're first. All right, thank you. Hello, uh, my name is CJ Knudsen from the Vermont Lake Monsters. So, Sophie? Uh, hi, I'm Sophie Quest, and I'm uh, with the Old East End and live on Chase Street. Troy? Hello, <laughs> Hello Troy Hedrick. I live on Billadu Court and am also one of two state reps for this district. Earhart? Hi, folks. This is uh, Earhart Maka over at uh, 60 Grove Street, part of the old East End. Um, sorry, I can't join you in person tonight. And Jean? Hi, I'm Jean. I'm at co-housing on East Ave. All right, and then we have a number of people here. We do have microphones around. So uh, I've got one right here. Start off right here on the, in the front row. Okay. Sharon Busher, live on East Avenue. Can't really share. <laughs> there you go, thanks. Joel Collada, 20 Chase Street, Old East End. Samantha Ayat, 20 Chase Street at Old East End. Hi, I'm Dave Cauley. I live on Nash Place, also part of the Old East End. I'm Fletcher Pratt. I live on Riverside Ave in Ward 1. Catherine Bach. I live upstairs in this house. <laughs> Hi, I'm Barbara Shaw Dorso. I work at the Burlington Community Justice Center, and I live in the South End. Hi, Thomas DeSisto. I live on Germain Street, which I suppose is the Graveyard District. <laughs> Uh, Gary Golden uh, on Clarko Court. I'm going to do this. I am Carol Livingston. I'm on the steering committee for um, the Ward 1 NPA, and I live with Gary on Clarko Court, which I think is still part of the old East End. I'm, <clears throat> I'm Jonathan Chapel Sokol. I'm one of the members of the steering committee, and I live on North Prospect Street, which I think is part of the old East End of the old North End. <laughs> Hi, I'm Angie Chap Sokol. I live on North Prospect with that guy. Hi, I'm Catherine Verman. I live on North Street, Upper North Street. I don't know what end it's in. <laughs> um, I'm Karen Long. I live on Henry Street. That's okay. We'll keep this one. Richard Hilliard, High Grove Court, which is over there. Uh, Sarah Flash off of East Avenue. And Carter Newbieser, I'm on the MPA, um, and I'm on Colchester F. Um, thanks. I, I did what I think I failed to do almost every day, and that's introduce myself. My name is Tom Darenthal. I live on Nash Place. Um, I have the privilege of living right next to Dave. And um, so with that, uh, I think we have some announcements. CJ, you wanted to make an announcement? I can't. Okay, I gotta, gotta unmute mute myself, thank you. Uh, thanks very much for having me tonight. I uh, just wanna take a few minutes to talk about uh, the upcoming baseball season for the Vermont Lake Monsters. And thank you guys for your support. Uh, we kick off uh, our home opener uh, this year on May 24th is our home opener, and we wrap up our regular season on Friday, August 5th. Hopefully we make the playoffs again. If we do, we'll wrap up around August 11th or 12th. Uh, we won the championship in 2021, which was the first time since 1996. Made it to game three of the finals last year and lost in the bottom of the ninth, which was a, a bummer, but that's why you play them. Um, and uh, the new exciting thing for us this year, and really for the entire community is uh, we were selected to host the all-star game so we're going to host the all-star game on tuesday july 25th uh the last time there's an all-star game at centennial field 
was July 14th, 1986. So about 37 years. Uh, so that'll take place on Tuesday, July 25th. The day before, uh, we're gonna have a home run derby on that Monday, followed by an on-field concert, which will last about an hour or so. Um, and it should, should be a great community event. People will be traveling in from uh, all over the country and obviously from Vermont to cheer on uh, the best baseball players in the league. Um, we plan on uh, doing a post-game fireworks show on that Tuesday, which is the 25th. And then we'd like to do three additional fireworks shows throughout the course of the season. The first one being Saturday, June 3rd. Uh, the second one being Saturday, June 24th. The third one being uh, Saturday, July 15th, and then the one following the Home Run Derby on uh, July 25th. Um, we continue to uh, offer great promotions at the ballpark, uh, drawing in families. Uh, kids eat free every Wednesday. Uh, post game, have a catch on Sundays for the kids, free face painting, um, and continue to do a lot of give community service. Uh, this, this week, we announced a partnership with the Vermont Food Bank to help raise funds and awareness for them all summer uh, to help uh, with food insecurity. So um, on our roster right now, we have four or five Vermonters, uh, which is fantastic. Uh, we had Vermonters on there in 2021, which was a huge success. We had 11 Vermonters. Last year, we had eight. And uh, this, in being in this league, it allows us to literally have local players and players from Vermont to play for the Lake Monsters. So we're looking forward to having a really exciting season here, uh, jam-packed with a lot of fun and affordable entertainment for families. All right, thanks, CJ. Thank you. Barbara? Can I answer any can I answer any questions at all or no? Questions? Sharon's got a question. Here. Hi, Sharon. Hi, it's great to see you. Um Me too. so besides front porch forum, how are you going to communicate to the neighborhood about the fireworks? Uh, we've been using the front porch forum, but we can use additional means if you'd like as well. So whatever your preference is. So uh, I, it's not my preference as much as just making sure that the neighbors, there are some neighbors that have animals and are very sensitive to this. And so sure. I just, I feel that when we give them a heads up, um, they're, they're happier to know that and can accommodate Definitely. better. So that's all. And However you want to make that work, I don't know. Um, I'm not looking to create problems for you, but I am trying to get that word out. Definitely. Definitely. Yeah, I think what we'll do is we'll, we'll think about it. Uh, do you think if we posted lawn signs uh, a day or two in advance around the neighborhood, do you think that would have an impact at all or no? I think people do read the signs if the signs are left up. Yes. Yeah. So, yeah. Okay. okay. I think that would be one way. And if it okay. doesn't work that first time, if you get complaints, then you can rethink. Okay. Definitely. Yeah. All right. Definitely Thank you. appreciate appreciate that feedback. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. I just like to endorse the quality of the entertainment at the Lake Monsters. It's a load of fun any evening for whatever generation you might be. I go with my daughter quite a bit, walk there and it is a blast. So uh, if you're looking for something to do on a nice evening in the summer, it is a great way to spend two or three hours. And uh, thank you, CJ, for keeping the whole thing going. Thank, thank you, Richard. We, we love being here and uh, we love the support that you guys have given us. Literally, it's been around since 1994. Uh, so it's, it's been around for a little while now. Um, and I think we're just really excited that uh, the fans are coming out to the ballpark uh, cheering on the team, uh, not only from Burlington, from Chittenden County and surrounding. And we're ecstatic that it's uh, players from Vermont as well playing for us now. So, and for us to have the all-star game, that's going to have an economic impact in the community. And uh, we're, we're excited about the upcoming season here. All right. Thanks. Any other comments? Dave? I have an announcement. Okay. Uh, Barbara? Yeah. You had an announcement. I do. Uh, you want to grab a microphone? Is there one in uh, near you? Thank you. So thank you, everyone, for giving me a few minutes to talk about our new Conflict Assistance Program, or CAP, at the Burlington Community Justice Center. Um, we offer formal mediation, restorative dialogue, just talking with someone who will listen, 
or something else. I'm the CAP coordinator, and my name is Barbara Shaw Dorso. So, parking, noise disturbances, trash not being picked up, animal problems, getting off on the wrong foot with your neighbor, piling the snow up in your driveway, too many cars in their yard, letting branches grow over into your part of the yard. Um, these are all things that happen in community. And um, they're also things that can impact your quality of life. They represent a breakdown in relationships, something that we talk about a lot in restorative practices, a tear in the fabric of community, as we often say. Oh, you would think this is such a small thing. Why should I try to resolve it? I might even make things worse. Well, these small things can become assumptions that work on you, friction point that keeps you from feeling comfortable with your neighbor. The Conflict Assistance Program app, here at the Burlington Community Justice Center can provide a safe and brave space to have conversation with your neighbor so that this situation doesn't escalate. A space that will allow you to get unstuck and go forward with some problem solving. A confidential space with an impartial facilitator. A space that supports all participants in making the community better. So what do I mean by making the community better or making your neighborhood better? That would be different for each one of us sitting here today. However, wouldn't it be nice to be happier in your relationships with your neighbors and in community? You're there for them, they're there for you. These are the sorts of relationship understandings that help bring people closer together to develop neighborhood and happier residents. This is our first self-referral program at the CJC. Anyone can reach out to me to CAP for mediation services again, facilitation of difficult conversations, coaching, just talking. I'm going to leave some placards here, if it's all right with everyone, with my contact information. Um, call, text, email. I'm receptive to all of them and responsive. Um, I really would like to talk with you if you're, experience, if you're experiencing some conflict in your life right now. Thanks again for your time. <laughs> Just one question. So to utilize those services, people have to go to Church Street when they're located? A call. Do you ever go to? Yes, I do. I, do. I'm on the road, too. So you do go to people's homes or? Uh-huh. OK. Yes. Yeah. Very willing to um, connect with people wherever they want, Okay. wherever they're comfortable. That's that's the most important thing. Any other questions? Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Dave, you have Thanks, Tom. A <clears throat> um, couple of things going on in the old East End that I wanted to let folks know about. Um, we have partnered with uh, UVM Office of Student and Community Relations and the Burlington Parks and Recreation uh, to put on a, a free event at Shemanska Park on May 4th. We're calling it Take a Break. And it's a two hour uh, time that folks can come down to the park and get some free Ben and Jerry's. So they're gonna be scooping up free Ben and Jerry's there. We'll have um, uh, some sports activities going on. So there'll be you know cornhole toss and basketball and pickleball. And we're also having a uh, exhibit going on inside the, the barn at Schumanska Park, which are some uh, posters, historic posters about the old East End that were done by UVM students. So uh, we encourage everybody to come. We're looking for some nice weather uh, to come. Uh, a couple of other things that are going on. Um, we, I've been working with uh, a few folks, and when we came into the uh, understanding that this year, July 4th of this year, is the 150th anniversary of the dedication of the Ethan Allen Monument. 
It was a really big deal 150 years ago. They had like 2,000 people come, and, uh, and a lot of officials from around the state and nationally came to that event. Um, so I've been talking to a few of the historic societies, uh, as well as the parks and cemeteries, about possibly putting on some kind of celebration, maybe this July 4th, to honor that uh, and commemorate that event. So uh, stay tuned. You'll be hearing more about it as things are getting underway. And finally, I, I want to say that I've been working with Joel and, and Sam um, on some uh, projects to help take a better look at uh, traffic and transportation safety in, in the neighborhood. Um, I guess we're calling it the pedestrian powered neighborhood project. But what we're doing is we're going around and we're taking surveys, we're uh, analyzing hotspots in the neighborhood, we're trying to envision ways that we can come up with uh, more livable aspects to handling some of the traffic that's there. You know, uh, over the last five years, the traffic volume coming uh, down Patch and Road and Grove Street has really increased. Um, and sometimes the speeds in that area are, are incredible as well. So we're working hand in hand with the uh, Department of um, uh, Public Works, and we're going to be having some events that are coming up. Uh, so this will be taking place uh, over the course of May, June, and July this year. So uh, we'll also keep you posted and stay tuned to some of those details. So that's that's my announcement. Any questions? I don't see any. Um, okay. <laughs> and then Karen. Okay. Oops. You're on. Oh, on. <laughs> Hi. Good evening. Um. So as I stated um, in introductions, I live on East Avenue, and on um, April nineteenth. Uh, which is a Wednesday at 6.30, the Department of Public Works Commission meets, at, and they're going to be discussing the pedestrian safety improvements for East Avenue. Um, so there are a few people that this impacts directly, but a lot of you, I just wanted people to know about it. Um, the commission will actually vote that night to approve the, um, the recommendations. Um, there will be some enhancements for crosswalks, There'll also be some narrowing of the road, and in doing that, there will be a loss of 13 parking spaces. We've had a number of meetings with um, representatives from DPW to discuss this, but um, I wanted people to know, and if, if anybody is listening that lives on East Avenue that didn't get the flyer or didn't know about this, I urge them to go and speak to the commission um, in advance of the vote. And the meeting, as I said, starts at 6.30. Um, as I recall, the, the, that's a hybrid meeting, so I believe you can Zoom in or call in. So um, that's number one. The second thing is something that um, I wanted to share with all of you. Um, and I, I'm, I'm sad to report that we've lost somebody in our ward that has been here and been a vocal person and someone that has interacted with us for years and years, Jared Wood passed away on on March 20th. And for some people, you don't know him. For others, um, you know him very well. And the family um, is very private. And so I reached out to his wife to ask her permission to share this news with all of you. Um, and she gave that to me, but she said, please ask them to respect our privacy. And I said, I certainly would. Um, I said, I encouraged her to let me do this. I said, because people, he was a, a presence, a force of nature. Um, and I think the thing that we could all do to really remember Jared is to work really hard to improve pedestrian safety. He was the biggest advocate for getting people around safely. And so, you know, there's the Bike Walk Council, and, and Cyril knows that I always think it's been, you know, the, the walk part hasn't been paid attention to enough. I feel the bike part has had a lot of attention. So I really want people to really think about ways that we can move people around safely not only in his memory, but for all of our well-being. So thank you all. And um, 
I'm very sad about someone that I've stayed connected to for all the years that I've lived here. So anyways, thank you. Thanks. Yeah. That was exactly what I was going to say. That Yeah, Jared lived across the street from us. And he was, he continued, Jonathan knew too, he would call me every week before an MPA. Would you please say such? You know, I mean, he couldn't come in the last few years, but he stayed really connected. And he was a big walker when he could. And he really cared about pedestrian safety. So that was the one thing. And then I did want to ask Sharon if she could share about Trinity Campus, because I understood you went to the meeting. I couldn't go to, a, there was a meeting for graduate students. Yeah. Yes. about you know developments with trinity um th those were my things i was going to ask Thank you. Want to say something? so um one of the one of our residents um is a professor at uvm and and let let people know about this meeting it was for graduate students and um the meeting was focused on what kind of housing they wanted um, what they'd be satisfied with. Affordability was a big issue for them, as no everyone can imagine. Um, there was a statement about the fact that they would be happy. They would be sat, not happy. They would be satisfied with a unit that was 350 square feet. But they also, and I've seen those units. Eric Farrell has those out on North Avenue. That's the only reason why. And I know it's livable. I wouldn't have known that unless I saw that unit. <laughs> but anyways, having said that, but they wanted it at a price of about $800. And some of those units go for like twelve, fifteen, seventeen hundred dollars $1,700. So they weren't, that didn't appeal to them. They also don't want to be merged in with undergrads. This was very important. They wanted to be in a community of graduate students or, or, or a mixed community, but not really mixed in with undergrads. They have a different outlook. They're focused different. And um, so that was another takeaway. The disappointing statement was that the vice president, Richard Kate, was there and I was incredibly disappointed. I've shared this with one city councilor, but I see that, um, I think that Zariah is on. Yes, there you are. <laughs> um, and I, um, anyways, um, Richard Kate said to this group of graduate students that, um, th that, you know, they were, hold we were, the city was holding up UVM from developing Trinity campus um, and that UVM had kept pace with housing and the enrollment, which I don't think is actually factual. But the other thing that he said was that the city has laid their, meaning our housing crisis at the feet of UVM and told UVM to solve the city's housing crisis, which was, and I heard that with my own ears, and I was, I was really angry, and I was mad. I was angry and disappointed that somebody at that level would be saying that to a group of graduate students, and I don't know who else was on because it was a Zoom phone call. So, um, so I know that there, and uh, I'm sure that our counselor will know more than I do, but I, I'm understanding that there are the the mayor and and UVM administration are going to begin or have begun some talks about how we get off of where we are right now um, with the stalemate. Um, so that's all I wanted to share. Um, but I was very disappointed at the, the words that came out of the vice president's mouth. Thanks, Sharon. If, if you haven't guessed, we have merged um, announcements and speak out, so. Are there other people that want to speak and speak up? I don't, and uh, Earhart, I see your hands up. Thanks, Tom. Wow, um, I did not know that Jared had passed away. Um, thanks for letting us know, Sharon. Um, Jared um, <clears throat> was for many years our next door neighbor. And up until recently, I would get uh, those weekly or sometimes bi-weekly calls from uh, Jared as well. They usually weren't about neighborhood concerns, but um, about more more global and international concerns for folks who didn't know Jared. He 
used to work for USAID in Central America and uh, had a lot of concerns about US policy um, and uh, how we've really messed things up in Central America. Um, wow, uh, I'm really sad. I'm really saddened um, to, to hear that he's passed on. He was, for folks who didn't know him, he was just one of the most um, civically engaged folks that you could well imagine uh, cared deeply about uh, the neighborhoods, cared deeply about just many things and paid a lot of attention to uh, a lot of the details that um, really make neighborhoods and make Burlington more uh, more livable, as well as those details that detract from that livability for uh, which he was uh, just a perennial advocate uh, to try and change things to make uh, make our neighborhoods more more livable. So uh, personally, uh, I know Sydney and I are both really saddened to hear that uh, Jared passed. I, I, I know he was getting up there uh, in years and had been not well um, for the last few years, but but for those those folks who got phone calls from him, him it was it was always just really sweet to to talk to Jared and uh, hear his concerns. Um, in terms of speak out, I did have something I want to raise, um, which I you know it's been in the news. Uh, I, uh, I I I was debating whether or not to raise this, uh, but I, I just feel like I have to say something about Chief Muirhead. Murad's uh, behavior um, and the complaint that was filed against him last uh, August by a surgeon, um, an ER uh, emergency room surgeon. I, I assume folks are aware of um, what's been in the papers. Um, and I just want to say that, you know, from what I've read, um, if all of that is 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 accurate, and I have no reason to believe that the surgeon um, that filed the complaint and that was reported in, in seven days was inaccurate in any way or embellished uh, anything that they that they said there were, uh, you know, a resident was a witness to all that and con confirmed it. I, I just want to say that um, I find all that to be an absolutely stunning lapse of judgment on behalf of our chief of police, um, our interim chief, and I'm, I'm just appalled uh, that he would interfere with the medical care of a gunshot victim. Uh, this was a victim. It was not somebody who was uh, suspected as a perpetrator, but a victim. Um, and to interfere with uh, their, uh, their care, a gunshot victim's care uh, in the emergency room is, is just it's it's just unpardonable to me. I I I understand he apologized, um, but I, you know, <laughs> um, apologies for stunning lapses of judgment are just not enough. And I think he he's really virtually disqualified himself from um, being appointed as uh, as permanent uh, chief, which I I know uh, that uh, our mayor uh, still plans to do now that he has uh, a majority on the city council. Uh, I am also deeply deeply concerned that. The city council was not notified about uh, any of these complaints until December, and and then further concerned that there was no public notice of any of this before um, the uh, March vote on um, on the citizens' oversight charter change. I I, I just that's an uh, that was an uh, keeping this information secret from the city council and from the public at large is obviously a very political move uh, on, on behalf of the mayor. And I, I'm just, I'm just appalled by the whole thing. And frankly, um, I'm, I'm fearful because, uh, you know, there are many citizens, many people in our community that do not trust the police. And this is just, you know, the politicization, politicization of public safety, um, in our community has, uh, just really spiraled downwards into a very, very bad situation. Um, and I, I, I'm just really sorry uh, for it that it's come to this, and I'm, uh, I'm, I'm deeply upset by it, and I'm deeply upset for our citizens of color who do not, many of whom do not trust the police, and this behavior by uh, our, our, um, our interim chief uh, just further underlines that. So um, I'll get it off my soap, soapbox. I, I just feel like I, I just felt compelled that I need to share my feelings with, uh, with folks about this. Thank you for listening. Thanks, Erhard. Uh, I do. I'm not aware of what he spoke of. Can you um, give a mic? Oh, right. Thank you. Oh, you. I'm just not aware of this. What he's speaking of. There, someone. Uh, all I can tell. I. All I know is what I read in uh, Digger, in Vermont Digger, 
And so there seven is, days. or seven days too? Just seven. Just seven days? Seven, seven days actually has much better coverage. They're the ones that uncovered this. Um, they got, you know, uh, the most recent article. Um, okay, I, I think I think if, if you read that, it'll give you a fair amount of background. Yes. Yes, if we, there's a mic somewhere. Thanks, I'm Cheryl Green. Um, I just wanna follow up on what Earhart was saying. I've been thinking a lot about this too. And for me, the issue of de-escalation is extremely important in terms of working with people. And like Barbara was saying, in terms of her um, social justice work and I am very concerned that this is a person who doesn't understand how to de-escalate himself in a stressful situation like that. I thought a lot about the surgeon trying to go into the surgery, having just experienced that stress. And I know that women on the um, police commission also received an apology from him because of his behavior toward them in a commission meeting. Um, so I'm I'm also very concerned about that and feel like um, we need to have a person in that position who understands de-escalation internally um, as well as his capacity to train other people. So um, that's what I wanted to say. Thank you. Thanks. Any, uh, any other comments? We had just, Earhart got on a soapbox, so I, I figured I had to as well. Um, <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, I, I don't, I, just on the Murat stuff, it's, it's for me, it's disqualifying, not this one instance. Like, we're all human and can have bad moments. I've had plenty of bad moments, like everybody does in life. Um, but it's a pattern of not being willing as someone in a executive position or someone who has a lot of authority over our public safety system of like not being willing to reflect on those and change. And this is someone who still to this day does not acknowledge that there's racial bias in policing in the Burlington Police Department. I mean, that's his position. And he's been pressed on that over and over and over and does not think that racial bias exists. Um, so for me, it's like, it's just one in a line of things that makes me really concerned. And, you know, I, and, and it's also fair. I've heard people say like, well, you know, we're not going to find a better police chief. Um, and I don't know if that's true or not, but I think it's a race to the bottom mentality, but not too long of a soapbox this time. So I got. Thanks. Any, uh, any other comments? You got a mic? Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm going to have to. I'm going to have to put myself in a dangerous situation here right now because I'm going to say something a little different from what everybody else has said. And it's really, a, it's, a, um, it's a request for understanding. I don't, I don't disagree with the principles that any of you have raised right now. I think everything you're saying makes a lot of sense. All I know about this case is what Courtney, Landy, Courtney Landon wrote in the paper. And I personally don't find Courtney the most unbiased of reporters, of journalists. That's my opinion. This is in front of the, of the Criminal Justice Council at the state. And I don't really know what the Criminal Justice Council at the state is, but maybe we should let them do their work. Um, if there's reasons why we think they're incapable of doing their work, then that's important. You could educate me on that, because I don't, I don't know. Um, but if this is in the middle, it's like in the middle of an investigation, maybe we should wait and see what the invest the outcome of the investigation is. That's not to say I think that Courtney's lying in the article. It's just that this is an ongoing thing. We should get some answers from the people who are really looking into it, who are supposed to be impartially looking into it. Those are my two cents. Thanks, Jonathan. Yeah. Got a I'm can I change the subject? <laughs> or are we still on this subject? No, we're, you, it's, you've got the mic. Okay. This is really trivial compared to what we just talked about. But I walk the neighborhoods 
all over the place. And there is an incredible amount of litter and garbage all through the neighborhoods. And I know there's a certain time when the neighborhoods are cleaned up or, and I'm wondering when that is. And if we could not till May, yeah. oh my God, it's gonna be, it's gonna be 75 tomorrow. It's bad, it's bad. So if I could do a plea that maybe we have a neighborhood I, I, can, can I ask a question? Do, do you tend to see it more on days that people have recycling out? Because on my street, we're in, uh, on recycling days, there's a tendency to see things, wind, wind will pick up things and yeah. around. And so you tend to see a little bit more. Yeah, that, that is true. And also, God, come the time that the students move out, it's really bad. But um I think it's just that the snow cover is melted and there's a lot of stuff that's been there for a long time. And it's not always just on the okay. greenways or anything. It's, uh, you know, it's, anyway, I would love it if we could say, okay, April 20th, we're gonna go clean up Burlington or, I or think at least Carter, one. I Carter's gonna wanna put that on his list. I was gonna say, yeah. yeah. Later on today, but right yes. Okay. Okay. And there's green updates. Green updates. Green updates first Saturday in May. Yeah. May sixth. Yeah. So Carter maybe maybe you know. Kate Kate Carter may be organizing a super green up day for Ward One. Yeah. Um. All right. This is the last call for speak out. One thing about the trash stuff, though, because this has been a pet peeve of mine for 30 years, 40 years, yep. but we have this new law about toters. Mm -hmm. Everyone has to have the blue toters with the cover right. at, from, I don't know, May 1st or something like that, it is May 1st. which I think is good. I like that they'll be covered and less stuff blowing around, but in the ordinance, the city ordinance, it says trash and recycling is to be put out on the day of pickup. And then those toters are supposed to be removed and out of sight. Now that is not happening. It has not been happening for many, many years. And it's gotten far worse in like rental neighborhoods like Lower Loomis, Union, uh, North Willard. Things are not supposed to be stored on the Greenbelt or the side next to the sidewalk 24 seven. And you know, I try to get code to do something about this, but I think as a whole community, and I've heard people in South Union complaining about this too, now that we have these blue toters that are so big and they're being stored on the green belt. But that's something, it's against the law. And if we as a whole community ask our city, you know, DPW or code or whoever can do it to enforce the law, there'll be less trash. I mean, our just, I'm always appalled at the marathon, how our city looks when we have the marathon, because all that trash that's been under the snow is still there. It's really embarrassing to have guests come walk down to see the marathon and what the, you know, what you see from Henry Street down to where the people are running is horrible. So anyway, thank you. I think we should have a green up sooner than May 6th and ask the city to enforce their ordinance about toters being out of sight again the, after the day of pickup. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right, Carol. Sorry, Helen. <laughs> I also, and this may be part of what we talk about later with Carter's help, is what is, we can call city departments and say, get on that, or you carry a garbage bag with you when you go for a walk. I mean, that's some of it too. And I get that it's frustrating. I get it's a mess. I mean, I guess there are needles in some place. I mean, I get that. But to some degree, I think there's something we need to think about is just what's my responsibility for my neighborhood? Um, and we do. We pick up crap all the time when we're walking the dogs. We just do that. Um, and then the next time I walk, I don't see anything. And so that's a pleasure for me. So I think it's something we think about with a number of these issues is what, what is my responsibility as a member of this community as well as um, a taxpayer. So I just think that's a, 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 something we need to think about, that dynamic. Thanks, Carl. All right, this is, la this is the final last call for speak out. <laughs> and, and don't get me wrong, I think we've had 
Oh, Bayhart, you're up. But we got to be quick. Just real, just real quick. Uh, you know, personally, uh, I mean, I think the toters are probably a, a good thing for uh, larger rental properties. But we we have a duplex. We uh, having this huge plastic thing is just I. I we don't need more plastic in the world. And I, I just think they're outsized for smaller uh, smaller uh, apartments um, for duplexes and triplexes that just don't have that same level of need. Thanks. All right, thank, thanks, Erhard. Uh, uh, Troy, I see that you've probably had your hand up for a bit. Uh, yeah, just a quick little screen share here. I just wanted to let Sharon know that I can validate that um, her concerns are are accurate. Um, UVM may be misrepresenting their enrollment data. I don't know if you're seeing my screen or not, but um, we see oh, hold on, you're we not. Don't see your, we don't see anything you're sharing. Hold on, I'm about to. Um, this is the data. Um, you're not. You're not out of whack. Um, this is not the city. I, I, I've done some work on this. I, I put it into a mill. Here's where UVM built U, U Heights South. Uh, the U Heights, uh, here's the enrollment five years later. Here's where UVM opened CCRH. Here's the enrollment five years later. That's the trend. I just wanted to share that. Yeah, that's it's a problem. That's all. All right, thanks. Uh, we're gonna move on. Uh, I apologize because I'm a really bad uh, timekeeper here. <laughs> But we do have to move on to uh, city council updates. And uh, Zariah, do you want to start? Yes. Um, and I'm always, I'm going to break my own rule. I'm like, I'm always going to keep it to like three things. But then you talk about things during speak out. And I'm like, ah, I feel like I have to address that. So I'm going to start with Acting Chief Murad, who, okay. say it again. No, uh, I'm trying to get people to be quieter on this end so we can hear you. Okay, um, with Acting Chief Murad, which um, I I think I agree with some sides that are maybe not on my side of the table. It's like, I don't think this automatically disqualifies him. And I still have a lot of respect for John Murad. But at the same time, for me, I think the bigger concern is that this, I do think this is a systemic issue. I think that this is something we've seen um, with uh, multiple people now is that when his authority is questioned, he very much chooses to double down. This was some, this, I, like the, when I last voted on his appointment and I tried to come to compromise with the mayor, one of the things I asked for was that the mayor sets forward a plan to work with him on this. The mayor <laughs> decides, said no deal, <laughs> that we're not doing this. Um, and I think for me, the second problem is that I don't trust the mayor to, um, when choosing between chiefs and choosing between transparency with the public and in choosing to create some kind of performance plan with the chiefs, I just don't think the management is there either. So I haven't seen, I don't think the mayor's given the council any information on how this issue, issue has or will be addressed. Um, I think that he continues to choose um, his appointees over transparency with the public, the media, or even the council. Again, I think he chooses to tell us very little. And when he does, he does it in a way that is that we're that we are told we cannot share without, you know, being legally liable, which I think is problematic. So I just think that there's that is my problem. And then the Criminal Justice Council, I think this year for the first time, maybe um voted to discipline um officers um for their first offense so it is generally seen as a non as a pretty biased body um it is not seen as a it is i would say it is more biased than the folks in this room so i don't know that that is the holdout of what we should be waiting for for an investigation especially because if they um it is my understanding that unless they pr provide discipline, there will be no public um, disclosure of information. So um, just want to make sure that that's known in the room. Um, so 
I will leave that there, but I think my opinion has not changed on, I think the thing that is disqualifying to me is having a police chief that says that racial bias isn't a thing in the Burlington Police Department. That for me is a disqualifying thing. And then again, I would want to know that some of these issues that he has a manager who's actively working um, to see that those are being addressed. Um, that's not his problem so much as the mayor's problem, but that's neither here nor there. Now I will change to some of the other things um, on announcements. Trinity Campus, um, Sharon Busher, I think mentioned this. You all know how I feel about Richard Kate. I'm sorry, to, sad to hear that. I think the council has been very, very clear with UVM that we do not think that they are the problem, but that we want them to be a partner in the solution. And therefore we need them to come to the table. Um, disappointed, but not surprised to hear it phrased differently. Um, there is movement in terms of potentially sitting down with the mayor. I do think the mayor isn't quite as rigorous on this as maybe the council as a body. So um, I think just hope that folks continue to stay um, on him and on the council and making sure that if there is an MOU that it kind of meets our minimum requirements, um, especially because I do think um, Per Troy's point, UVM has been pushing a narrative now that they've been keeping pace with beds, which beds may be true, but that's not quite the same thing as building new housing or having housing keep pace, um, as we know with the force triples. So um, more bad news, um, <laughs> Memorial Auditorium. I think you all have heard, but I just wanna make sure there were two proposals for Memorial Auditorium. One was, um, kind of repealed after folks did more due diligence on their finances. And the other one was for housing, um, which just wasn't a feasible proposal in terms of their cost estimates. I don't know that much about building housing, but I looked at it and I was like, this doesn't seem realistic. Um, and so we're reopening the proposal. If folks want to speak to, I think one of the questions that the council has is, we're definitely hoping to open it up a little bit more. I think the first proposal kind of had all of the hopes and dreams on what the community really wanted to see in the proposal. Like here's the survey that we did. Folks wanted to be a public space, a performance space. We wanted to stay in city ownership. Um, and we're realizing we can't, like as mo the longer Memorial sits, the less we're probably gonna get all of our wishes. Um, my condition that I left on the table is even if it's a 99 year lease, I don't want to see it sold. I would rather just see it rented. I don't think we should be getting rid of public property. Um, 99 year lease is already hard to swallow, but I think a sale would be hard. Um, if folks have any other kind of minimum conditions they want to point out, feel free to email me, feel free to speak them into the room, whatever works. And I'll do one more kind of longer item and then two just, this is happening. Um, so I think folks have heard me talk about this, but just to throw the numbers out there again, in 2019, we had 261 houseless folks who were sheltered and 10, and sorry, 48 were unsheltered, just, just around 300 people. Last year, we had 658 in Chittenden County, sorry, is the frame of reference in 658 folks who were sheltered and 10 who were unsheltered. So a total of nearly 700. And I bring this up again for two reasons, which is one, I think this year to deal with how many folks are gonna be unsheltered and what we want to do with that in a humane way. Cause right now we don't, that compared to our shelter capacity, that means hundreds of more people um, in Chittenden County who don't legitimately don't have anywhere to go because the shelters will be far beyond capacity. Um, and then the second thing is just a reminder that like folks are struggling. I know a lot of us have been pretty resilient throughout this pandemic. Maybe our like livelihoods haven't changed that much, but that's not true for everyone. I think we sometimes forget that and just that folks are struggling mentally, they're struggling financially. Um, and just a reminder to offer as much compassion to folks as possible. And then the last two things are just that um, charter change and ordinance, which I'm on the ordinance, which I will remain on the ordinance committee, are going to be looking at South End rezoning. So there's a big South End rezoning project um, to allow all kinds of development there. And I'll give a more comprehensive update in the coming weeks. 
Um, and then we're also going to be looking at oversight because almost every counselor and the mayor have said for years that we need oversight as we know the last one failed. And so we're hoping to look at what oversight we can provide through the police commission, which I do think is a good idea. I think the police commission is the right body given all the work that they've already done on coming to learn um, their responsibilities and what is possible um, to be an oversight body for the Burlington Police Department. Sorry, that was so much longer than I wanted to do it, but hopefully that was helpful. Thank you. Thanks, Zariah. Uh, any questions for Zariah? Richard, you got a mic there? Zariah, very, very quickly, about five years ago, um, the NPAs organized a meeting on the future of Memorial Auditorium. It was very well attended. I'm thinking at least 100 people and went through the history and uh, it was a wonderful meeting. And I'm just wondering if the city council has ever considered any of the proposals that came out of that meeting. Yeah, I think the, I mean, I, that was, I think that was the information that was summarized in what became kind of the annex to the proposal in terms of what folks wanted to see out of that space. And I think that with the city having no more bonding capacity and nobody really being interested in doing some of those things in the building, um, I don't see, like, like I said, I think the first RFP was like, here's the city's hopes and dreams for what we want the building to be. And I don't think we see a way that that's gonna happen with like current material and construction costs. Yeah, I was just surprised that the, uh, that the, essence that came out of the meeting was never ever reconstituted uh but that was five years ago i guess no i think it i mean correct i wasn't at that meeting five years ago but at least like came out of like what we said this or the community's hopes and dreams was like that it should remain a public space to some extent that it should honor its function as a veteran memorial um that it should have some of that, like, I mean, there were lots of things, right? It was just like, oh, it'd be nice if there were food, but like there were so many ideas that were in there, but nobody's come forward to make any of those ideas a reality. So I don't think it's that folks didn't know the ideas. I think it's just, there's not a, like the cost of first doing the building and then making that happen. Nobody seems to be <laughs> interested in filling that role. All right, thanks. Anyone else? It's all yours. Thanks. Um, well, m my report is going to be m much shorter than uh, Zariah's because I've uh, only been on the city council since uh, last Monday, and and really my only official act so far has has uh, um, has being uh, sworn in. Um, is being sworn in. Um, I have been doing some preliminary work. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, I'm Tim Doherty, um, and I uh, am your city council person for the East District as of last Monday. Um, my apologies. So, so yeah, so I haven't been a city council person for very long, um, but there has been a considerable amount, and I'm sure Zariah went through this uh, when she was first elected to, of sort of preliminary meetings, uh, informational meetings, um, some of which I think uh, pertain to some of the discussions that we've had. Um, so, for example, yesterday I spent um, uh, an hour or two over at the DPW um, and discussed some of the issues uh, with with uh, them uh, that have been raised here. It was primarily an informational meeting for me um, to learn what DPW does, how it works, you know, how they interact with the city council, how they um, perform their functions. I had a similar similar informational meeting. Um, uh, on uh, on the TIF uh, development uh, regions, um, bringing me up to speed on what those are. I think all the new city council people have been through um, these routines. Uh, that was fascinating um, uh, on the TIF uh, front. It was something that I have not a tremendous amount of uh, un previous understanding of as, as to actually what goes into those uh, funding mechanisms. Um, uh, and th there have been a couple more meetings like that 
Um, with respect to, to uh, DPW, um, I did raise, because it's a number of people have asked me about the trash uh, issues. Um, I did raise this with them. Um, and um, they uh, talked a lot about their uh, hope that the uh, that the toters with the lids were going to make a difference, um, which I, I think that they probably will. Um, I asked the question uh, about enforcement um, because it has been raised with me whether or not there has been a diminishment in enforcement on the requirement um, that you know we we property owners bring the bins in. Um, they didn't have the answer and they referred me to uh, the enforcement folks. So that's next on my list. But it certainly seems to me that um, there's a question about whether or not enforcement has declined uh, and if it has, uh, why, um, which raised for me whether or not um, there might be even some tinkering that we could perhaps do uh, with the ordinances. Um, so, um, interested to hear about our, our ideas in, in the neighborhood and in, in, in terms of trash, but it, it's clearly clearly a, a significant issue. Um, the other big issue that, that, that's been discussed is the issue with Chief uh, with Acting Chief Murad. Um, I, I did not know about this, um, of course, well, maybe not, of course, until um, after I was uh, elected in, in, in the city council. Um, so it's new information to me as of, of last week. I'm still getting up to speed on it. Um, you know, when I was running, I, I said repeatedly um, that I, I didn't didn't know uh, how I was going to vote uh, if the mayor brought the acting chief forward to the city council. Um, I still don't know uh, how I'm going to vote. Um, it certainly seems to me uh, that this issue is a really, really serious one. Um, his conduct, um, as it's been described, has been serious. Um, I uh, have not had the opportunity to hear his side uh, of, of what happened. I don't know whether the city council has um, or whether the police commission has either. Um, obviously, that's an important step in the process. Um, and I think, you know, I think the city is facing a really, again, if 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 the mayor brings uh, acting chief Murad forward for a vote, uh, I think we face a really, really um, significant, uh, grave uh, decision um, that has really significant consequences on both sides of the equation. Um, I hear loud and clear the reservations that many people have uh, about acting Chief Murad um, and the basis for those um, reservations. I also think we have to balance um, uh, an assessment as to what the city will look like going forward for the next year or two um, if we don't have uh, a permanent police chief mm -hmm. um, and what those kinds of consequences um, will mean. Um, so that's a long way of saying, uh, you know, I, I don't have a position yet, uh, one way or the other, um, and uh, I think it's too too important a decision to rush. So that's what I've been doing in terms of sort of getting oriented. There's also just a tremendous amount of logistical orientation that I won't won't bother you with in terms of email, getting the email set up, which I think I've successfully done, getting all the paperwork in to become an official city employee. Um, which has been, and, and it's been really interesting and exciting to begin the process of meeting with all the city departments um, and learning what they do. Um, there's just a tremendous amount uh, of nitty gritty work that goes into uh, running uh, a piece of infrastructure like our city. Um, so those are my updates. Questions? I have a question. As far as litter and the totas, um, and I say this as a retired supply chain professional, um, DPW didn't order enough totas, so they won't they won't all be in until June at least. Uh, and meanwhile, you stick with the blue bins, and you won't get fined. They did. They did mention the. The, I forgot to mention, they did mention to me the supply issue with respect to toters. They also told me one other thing that I wasn't aware of, um, which is that not only uh, did they move toward the toters in interest of keeping the recycling from blowing about our neighborhoods, um, but that they had, uh, that there had been injuries with respect to um, the haulers pulling, you know, picking up the, the topless bins, and that because these can 
um, work with the mechanized uh, trucks, they anticipated that it was going to be safer uh, for folks, which is which is not something that I knew or had thought of. Karen. Thank you. Um, yeah, they had said that in their little postcards that they sent out about people were one of the, you know, one of the biggest issues was shoulder injuries with the haulers. But to Earhart, there are three different sizes. My understanding, you can get a small, medium, or large blue shoulder, blue covered one, and they're all different prices. Um, but I think that um, it's just, I think it's a great idea, and I hope that they will just um, keep them out of sight so that we don't have to have blue shoulders all over the place. Oh, I know what I was going to say. They also are asking people to only put out the shoulders when they're full so that it will save time for their pickup people. And I know on my street, some people did put their shoulders out before they were full, and they the collectors didn't take it and left a little note or hold them or whatever that so they're asking you fill the coder to the top and then put it out instead of them having to empty it when it's only a quarter full so that's you know that's a good thing too i think less less traffic you know, they should be able to get their job done quicker if they're not emptying because they do have to hook it to the machine and it direct you know dump so anyway that was the other thing that UPW told me about only putting out pillars in the fall. Okay. Any other questions, comments? I have a, just a question. Um, I'm just wondering if Soraya or Tim or anyone in the room knows um, the appointment of a permanent police chief, is that a like a career appointment or is it, you know, for five years and then it's reviewed or anything like that? I just realized I don't, I don't know about that at all. I would yeah. defer to Zariah on that. Yeah, it's um all uh I am struggling to remember if it's coded because I know for the city attorneys it is how many years they're appointed for, but it definitely is a like usually the same term as the mayor. So it's anywhere between two and three years is the appointment process for I think all of most of the department heads. One to three years, I should say. Thank you. Any other comments, questions? Yes. Just a quick question. Just a quick question. And, and it's um, just about channels of communication to you. I guess I'm just wondering, I, I'm sure you're just deluged with uh, meeting with these city offices. Are you going to do something similar in terms of now that you're, uh, you know, our elected representative, are you going to be having like a listening tour similar for, and, and how might we plug into that? Yeah, so you know, one uh, one one piece of my plan is to have sort of regular uh, coffee hours, and something that I wanted to talk to Zari about to see if she was interested in. Uh, I know Hannah King from the Eighth Ward is is interested in it. Um, you know, I've been asking people, and 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 you know, maybe we can have this conversation afterwards. But I've been asking people, and I asked folks at the at the Ward Eight NPA meeting that I was at last week or the week before. You know what would you, what would be the best mechanism to have consistent, regular communications with with me um, about what's going on, and also, frankly, candidly, something that I can make sure that I can fit into my life because you know I want to make I want to make sure that I set up a system that I can stick to, um, as opposed to just you know trying to deal with things willy nilly. Um, certainly I know the, the other city council, most folks on the other, on, on the city council have regular posting sort of, you know, legislative update, city council update on front porch forum. You know, I'm, I'm committed to doing that uh, on a monthly basis. I think a monthly basis is probably adequate, but, you know, happy to hear if, if people want more or maybe, maybe less of me. Um, you know, I, I thought sort of, office hours, coffee hour, you know, either at my house or, you know, would be a good idea, but I want to make it mechanized and routinized and sort of systemic, which, which isn't to say, of course, that people shouldn't feel comfortable calling me and coming by and emailing me and texting me whenever they have an issue, um, of course, um, but I, I, that was my first idea on that front, but I'd be happy to hear more. All right. 
Um, we are going to move forward. Thank you very much. Can I move? No, you <laughs> cannot move. All right, you fair have enough. To stay. No. I'll stay here. <laughs> um, we're going to go to the school commissioner update. Where is it's right here? Here's a mic. Nope. This spot's warm seat. Um, good evening, uh, Gary Golden. I'm also newly elected uh, in my case as the East District's uh, school commission. So um, there are many things happening in the district and probably more than I can talk about because I don't want to rob too much of Carter's time. Um, if you are, uh, if you've joined Front Porch Forum, uh, I'm posting there after each of the board meetings. I posted today. I did not use my board um, account, so I'll repost for those of you who aren't in my little corner of Burlington. Um, so that's sort of where it'd be easier for you to get a lot more information about what's going on than uh, I'm going to be able to present uh, in this setting. Um, right off, let me say, I do also have an um, email account, and it's really simple, ggolden at bsd, or Burlington School District, bt.org. That's all in the Front Porch Forum. Um, I also posted um, at length about the board meeting and also the, um, the Covenant School shooting. Um, in my case, I'm a former school employee, so I may get my, I don't know if I'll get my hand slapped, but uh, I went into a little detail about what it means to be a school employee in an active shooting drill and what you and your students are going through. Because I think it's a pretty sanitized process on how the media covers it or what, unless you know a teacher who's talked to you about what they've had to do. It's, it's a really scary and to some degree for the students traumatizing experience. Because you, if you're doing it correctly, the teacher doesn't know and the student definitely doesn't know. So you are kind of sure it's a drill, but you don't know and you're hiding. And that's the point I was trying to make that we are actively hiding from someone harming us. I was myself going to do that. So that's all in the letter. I tried to sanitize it a little, but um, that's there. Good news, we, um, I'll move on. Our um, Department of Justice um, review is has been settled. This was something that came out of uh, the Sustainability Academy a few years back. I've put links in the, um, in my transcript about how you can get more information about that. But it was really about bullying, about harassment, uh, treatment of our global majority students. Um, and all those um, numbers are improving. Um, our equity report came out and is showing that we're really working hard to include the global majority. And that's, you know, the, the I think a pretty appropriate term for our new Americans, our refugee population, and really engaging them in the sort of upper end classes, the um, advanced placement, the honors classes. I'm coming in underneath because my population was always the at-risk population. And that's the next piece. What are we doing for the students who may not be interested or may not need those classes, but they need some tech education. They need more practical um, experience across the board. So I'll talk more about that as the, the year goes. Um, next important meeting tomorrow night, there's an um, open house for two new candidates for the BHS principal position. Uh, all three of the candidates are sort of homegrown, um, Milton, <clears throat> Barry, and then um, a new person is the principal at <clears throat> Hanover, which is a shared state. Uh, it's both Norwich, Vermont, and Hanover, New Hampshire. So it's going to be nice to have them coming out and knowing what uh, being a principal in Vermont's about. We've had several instances with our past superintendent where they he was not aware of Vermont law around schools and made some poor decisions around accreditation and reorganization. 
we've got people who kind of know the system a little better. Um, so those, and those are the high points. Please look at my transcript. Uh, please give me, um, I also have a website that my daughter set up last night. So um, there's a, for the Carters of the world who like to multitask, there's a, a podcast of me really basically reading the my posting. But, you know, if you're cooking, you do like I do, you're listening to something. So you've got me for at least one night. <laughs> so uh, any quick questions? Because we want to give Carter as much time as possible for the, the exercise that's coming up. Thank you for taking the job. Oh, it's actually my pleasure. I'm a former employee here, so I'm I'm just probably the weirdest candidate or member that they've gotten in a while because I worked in four of the schools. My daughter attended two more of them, and Carol worked at another. So I've had sort of direct contact with seven of the nine schools. So they don't really know what to do with me yet. <laughs> kind of fun. So thank you all for your support and. Uh, please email or the phone number's there. I'll call you back. Um, I don't know about coffee times, if I'm going to do that, but I may do some meetups uh, when, the, uh, particularly as budget season kicks off. I want to give you as much information as I can about what that's going to look like with the bond, and it's just going to be a mess. So thank you all. Thank you. Well, the, the uh, last item uh, for tonight is a brainstorming discussion, and Carter's going to lead that. This is really to bring up projects that should be done in our ward um, and uh, possible sources of funding. So, Carter, yeah. I'm going to hand the mic to you. Yeah. I'm going to get my script. Yeah. Um, just get my laptop. Okay. Yeah, so I missed last meeting, so I missed kind of like the what gave rise to this, but at the last MPA steering committee meeting, um, we were thinking about like what could be projects with the goal of both doing something that's Ward 1 specific, um, so like in our neighborhood, but also something that like we can get all get to know each other a little bit better, have some fun. Um, MPA can be really fun. It could also be kind of dry sometimes. You know, it doesn't always like lend itself to hanging out and getting to know people. Um, but we're changing that slowly but surely. Um, so this is what I'm going to do. There's a box of pencils here. And there's basically just three questions we're trying to answer. We're not trying to come to any decisions tonight. Just trying to think like big, broad strokes. What are some ideas? It could be anything, honestly. Like first question is just like, use your imagination, whether it's, you know, two examples were like the pathway over by the hospital. Like if we could just wave a magic wand, wouldn't it be great to have a stairway up there um, from East Ave to the, like up that hospital hill? Um, I know like is good, like Brian Chena and a bunch of other folks do a bunch of planting with a bunch of different community partners of like, you know, neighborhood uh, flower beds and sort of make the street look a little bit nicer, get to know your neighbors while you do it. Um, and then it could be something like Trinity Campus. Like I think Jonathan or Tom, I think you sent the email um, making the point that it could also be something like, hey, like we want to go all show up to this thing, whatever it is. So just think big picture. Um, I'll, people can, uh, I'll pass it around. We'll pass around this box with pencils. You take a pencil, um, take a sticky pad and maybe split it in half if we need to share or share the sticky pads. Um, Write down your ideas. We'll do like 10 minutes. Um, and then right behind you, Karen, there's like an ideas. You can't see it because I thankfully got a pen from or a, a marker later on. But that butcher board right there is all the ideas. And then we'll go through and sort of talk about like, OK, what's what can we actually achieve? Like what's in capacity, what feels realistic and then what uh, maybe not so much um, or maybe is a much longer term kind of thing. Does that make sense to folks? Yeah. That is a great question. I almost forgot. You got me there. Um, so Sam does not have a chat function on the Zoom, so he can't send you all a chat. But if you're online, if you do the Q&A function and ask Sam a question, it could just be like, hey, I want to participate. Um, but if you message Sam, 
he can respond with a Google Doc that we set up and all the prompt questions one through three are in there. And so you just throw your ideas down. And then afterward, you know, throughout the process and also afterward, we'll make sure that both the physical sticky notes and the virtual sticky notes via Google Doc are, are taken care of. Does that make uh, sense to folks on Zoom? Does anybody have questions about that? I got the big thumbs up from Troy. All right, I got two thumbs up. I'll take it. Um, okay, sweet. Let's pass out pencils. No other questions? So right now it's just ideas. Just like what ideas could, um, what are different projects we could work on as a community? Either improving something, um, you know, just something that we could do in the neighborhood that we could do together and and have a joint project. So just one of the three questions. Yes, yeah, we're just starting with ideas and then we'll go on to the, the other two. All right. But it's really open, right? It's super open, yeah, yeah. So from planting flowers to a big dig to the lake, anything spare game. Anything, yeah. anything and everything. Okay. You should think big. Uh, yeah. From Winooski down to the lake. No. Yeah. Big dig, yeah. Uh, all right, can I give you this? So just take one of these. Yeah, sure. We'll split this one. Do no, no, no. yeah. you want to do pencils? Well, that'd be great. Pass them. And you want one idea on each paper or take one idea and then you write out the ideas. Yeah. Carter, could you outline that again? I don't see a function uh, for participating. Yeah. So you see you see the bottom left like near your mute and your uh, video button, Earhart? Yeah. So two like right next to participants, there's a QA. Yeah, we, not on my phone. I have a QA button at the upper right, which I've uh, pressed, but it doesn't allow me to say anything. Well, Sam, because Sam we're saying that's it. Because we're panelists, we can't do the QA. We can only answer the QA. We can do so some we need to type and then we can only answer to it. Uh, yeah. There's also the whiteboards yeah. option. Yeah. 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 Did you guys hear that? No. Nope. Folks on Zoom, uh, Sam is just going to kick you down to uh, not panelists, but attendees. Okay. Yeah, and then no, 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 the more the better. Just like fill it. Yeah, wait, I got the original one got down and physical move the other one that's involved so they built it to be moved I really like 1927. I really like the last around, especially the high end. So, this is the original Richmond, which is not a very good place. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Um, and then just for everyone online, if you are an attendee right now and you would and you don't want to participate, just raise your hand and I'll put you back up into a uh, a panelist. Thank you. Hey, uh, Sam, I think I accidentally went back to being a panelist, so I. <laughs> Still not sure how to do this. Yeah, yeah. Um, is the uh, did the Q and A function completely go away? Yeah, and the um, yeah. Okay. Well, I got I'll, I got Troy's I got Troy's question, but I know that part. Okay. Um, I'll I'll kick you back down and send you the link. Oh wait, again. Just... never mind. I think it's okay. Um, <clears throat> I just didn't scroll up far enough. Looks like I can okay. answer this. Perfect. Okay. I don't think we've ever nice. used like all of the. Um, well, I don't know what I have to do, but whatever. Um, I feel like you, you never were trying to find stuff with them. I don't know what the answer is. No one's fishing for this. Yeah. So, like, no, yeah, I think, no, I think that's right. I think it's a well-founded. Yeah. You don't know what parameters are. Yeah. Yeah. We were talking about, that was one of the questions we were asking on the steering committee. It was like those and then also the... Um, yeah, it's a very good point. And then the um, I I do nonprofit fundraising for a living, so it's like I was like, yeah, let's just go put up businesses and EDM and yeah, I think we can find the money. If we have this cool project and like between between those and like somebody, you know. Yeah. Yeah. I, I agree. I think it'll be good. Along with them. So, do, do folks need a couple more minutes? Are folks still thinking? You're good? Could you all use a couple more minutes? Yay, next. Um, more? All right. So we'll give it like one more, one more minute. If you haven't yet, throw the sticky notes up with all the others on that cookie board. Carter, can you hear me? Yeah, I can. So I'm I'm having difficulty. I was having difficulty accessing, but all I wanted to have you write for me is just some beautification along Riverside Avenue, flower boxes or something like that. Thank you. Yeah, no, for sure. That's a good one. You want me to write that? You got it? I'll do it. Okay. Okay. There's a good 10 to the water um, to the rest of the uh, 
Yeah. Hey, Carter. Yep. I forgot to add a zip line all the way down to the waterfront. If you could just add a zip line to the waterfront, that'd be great. That that counts. It's in the. Oh, perfect. Yeah, thank you. All right. Well, we'll bring it, we'll wrap up the ideas section. I know a couple more people are just sticking notes there. Everybody got theirs in? I know virtual, I see a couple. And Sharon, we got yours in as well. Oh, Karen, be careful. You're just wrapped on the cord. Thank you. Um, okay, are there any pencils? Or they're floating. Yeah, pencils and stuff can come back here as folks can. So bringing back everybody back together to think about ideas. So we're going to go through, I'm just going to read each idea on the sticky notes. And then I want to get like a straw poll as I read them. If you feel like they're in capacity. And what I mean by that is like now until August ish, right? Is like the rough timeline. Like this is something we could achieve, we could plan, we could come to next meeting and like get done by August. Or if it's something that feels more longer term, right? So like something that maybe is a great idea, but it's going to take a lot of planning, a lot of research. Doesn't mean we don't do it. It just means like, we should be realistic on on time stuff. Does that make sense, to people? Yeah. Should we be taking budget into account if we're saying what's uh, capable and what's not? Yeah, I think so. That's not, that's not for sure, for sure. I think it's like budget. It's like how long would it take? You know how how sort of logistically difficult? Like what would go into doing that? And we can have some of that discussion as we go along. Um, and yeah, certainly how much it will cost. I do fundraising for a living. So I'm always like, don't worry about costs. Like, it doesn't matter. We'll find somebody to give us money. Um, but yeah, like if it's a $3 million project, that is different from like a $250 project. Yeah, Tom. Yeah, Carter, is there, I, I looked a little bit into where we can get money. And mm -hmm. there's a number of places where they um, you can write uh, proposals, write grants to. Mm -hmm. And the, the, the dollar values of that they'll respond to can be in the tens of, of dollars up to the tens of hundreds of thousands of dollars. Yeah. So um, there's there's a pretty big space depending on what you want to do. Yeah, there's like Vermont Community Foundation has a ton of small grants and New England Grassroots Fund. And yeah, to your point, I, I totally agree. Yeah. Um, okay, so I'm going to shift this way and maybe grab a new mic. Yeah. And folks, and I'm, yeah, I'm going to make a list that you got. Well, so I'm going to shift them right here. And Richard, okay. um, I might have to, yeah, sorry. I'm sorry to kick you all out. Um, but so I'm going to move them into like, I'm going to get a straw poll. So if you think it's like incapacity, you raise your hand and then I'll move over and I'll be like, okay, is it more out of capacity? Or if you have questions or something, give give some sort of indication where we think we are. Um, possible and impossible. No, so I think in terms of, yeah, it was in and out in my brain, but it's really like short term, like achievable by the end of August from now. And then this is maybe like longer term is gonna take a year or we need to like figure out what it would entail. Like maybe we don't have all the information, but you know, something maybe to start us off and then something that we could, um, once we have a little experience collectively under our belts could, could get it into. And then we'll take a vote on like, what's our top three and everybody will walk up with a pencil and mark an X, but we'll sort of move the sticky notes as we go. Does that make sense? Yeah, quick question. Are you going to give like a two sentence explanation of what those three or four words on the sticky name? to sort of give us perspective so that we, if we say we can do something or it's going to take a, you know, a long time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's got to be grounded, so it would help if you did this. For sure, for sure. That's totally fair. 
So we'll go quick. Yeah. Cause it's going to be, uh, what do we got? We got 20 minutes. Good word. <laughs> yeah. For sure. Okay. So I see community garden in, uh, oh, in a park, community garden, in a park in capacity end of August. Sure. In. Sure. Yeah. In? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. As I go, if I see any dupes, I'll just, I'll grab them. Um, I see, oh, the, I'm going to embarrass myself and not be able to read handwriting. Neighborhood, something talking like. Who's got this one? It's the cursive. Uh, neighborhood storm. Storm. Tubli tubing? Like see, it's not so like easy. Oh, storytelling like moth hour. Oh, oh, oh. Neighbor to neighbor theme. I like storm. Storm tubing. <laughs> I'm gonna say in and okay. I like that too. Um closed streets for car free bike access day. In okay. Whoop. Nice. Mexico City can do it every Sunday morning so Amen. Amen. Uh, weed, weed rain garden on Mansfield Ave. Rain garden on Mansfield Ave. Weed. Yeah. Weed. Yeah. 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 North Street too. Oh, wait, I just want to say because there's one right in front of my house. The city is responsible for that, and they do. They're a little better now about sending people out to do it, but not that great. Okay. So, and it's feasible. And, and it's feasible. Yeah. feasible wise. Okay. Okay. Um, don't hesitate to work with adjacent ward if appropriate. I'm going to take this as a general tactic and put it down there. I think that's very true with any of these projects. Um, street or block cleanup, in or out. Yeah. Okay. We're very realistic. I like it. We're very grounded in, in what's possible. Um, restore city green belt that has been made impermeable by cars. Context on this one? I did that. You did that? Um, we own city property, but a lot of our green belt is just packed down because people don't respect the grass. Mm -hmm. And Paul Bierman did the same while back in the geology professor where he literally took his and gave students and they broke up the soil and planted grass. And he's always said that, you know, if we did that, I mean, it's amazing how much green space and permeable so soil has been lost in our ward. So that was that. In. That feels in? Yeah, sounds like that. Okay. It's like restore green belt. Maybe re yeah, restore green, green, green belt. Yeah. 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 Which is city, you know, like I say, we own that city. I think property. that's out. You think that's out? I think that's a long-term project. What is temperature check? Depends how much you're going to do. You're going to do a block, or are you going to do the whole ward? Wards uh, long term. I mean, because I think I might harder. Like you're gonna lose yeah, yeah. Okay. So I'm going to put it. I'm. I'm going to put it. I'm going to put it on depends on how big the scale and put it at the top. Yeah. 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 You can do demonstration project, and then that would be it. Um. So I'm going to speed up a little bit, folks. It's going to be like um, what they do in like the Roman movies. Like, yeah, I get it. <laughs> um, bus stops. Better, better bus stops all over the place. I'm going to say out. Yeah. Yeah. Out. yeah. I agree, though. I would really like that. I just, quick question. Better bus stops means better bus stop shelters? Yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of bus stops that are missing shelters. Shelters. Okay. Okay. So know where they are. Yeah. Yeah. Benches. Benches. Clean up um salmon hole. salmon hole salmon hole mail. Uh, I think if yeah, it could be the um if it's like the top depend on the size, like how yeah, much like if you yeah. just want to do that bench area at the top, or if you're doing like the whole trail. It's really like, messy down there. Yeah. Okay. I'm gonna agree with that. I think it's a good assessment. Um, meet neighbors 
and ask them to bring toters in when picking up end of day. I'm gonna say out slash depends. No, in. In. This is communication. This is easy. Okay. I love it. Um. Outstrip plantings. Yeah. Yeah. I shouldn't have been a sticky note reader. Um, so say that one more time. The uh, house strip is where all the, uh, like the space between the sidewalk and the street. Yeah, the green, belt. Green, belt. green belt. So I'm going to put it up with the screen belt guy. Um, sponsor community parade like uh, month and ramble, like the ramble in the old north end. Yeah. That's a lot of That's maybe out. Yeah. Really good, good idea. Old North then shouldn't have all the fun. Uh, community dinner pre MPA. Expand the chili. Smiley face. Yay! Yeah. 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 In. Out. I say in. Okay. 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 Let me throw that there. Uh, trash cleanup plus competition. Oh yeah. Trash cleanup would make it spicy, you know, make it fun. Yeah. Like, oh, do, it, do it with yeah. people, like, do it as teams so, with, like, people you don't know in your oh, neighborhood. That's a great idea. In? In. Yeah, like that's in. in. Yeah. It's a good reason. Yeah, I love that. That sounds awesome. Um, I dropped one. Hopefully that stays up there. I'll tuck. There we go. <laughs> Community. <laughs> yeah. This is so many butcher board and... Uh, Sticky note exercises in my life. Community demand safer streets. I don't know. Like forever? Yeah. Long okay. Term. Long term. <laughs> Probably. Create access to Shemanska Park from Colchester Court longer. I think we could do it. It's a big project. It's yeah. Big. I like the, I like the idea. Definitely feels big. Um Set up a community beer garden festival. I think that's more here with the ramble. Also pro. That's a top of the list, though. <laughs> <laughs> um, monthly cleanups we got already. Picket UVM president over housing. Yeah. <laughs> that's that's one over my that's one after my own heart. Um we feel like in. That's feasible. That's feasible. All right. I'm pro. We did say advocacy. Um, monthly cleanups we have somewhere, so I'm just going to put it down there, but yes, um, clean up trash days, uh, remove graffiti, more bus shelters. So those are the next two. So I'm going to just put trash cleanup graffiti slash monthly cleanups together oh. as sort of a similar idea. Here was a bus stop one. Yeah, there was a bus stop one. I think it's on the right, though. Yeah, so this one's more. So more and better bus stops there. And these so go. It needs to have a team of people that remove graffiti. They still do. But it's largely mm -hmm. volunteer. Well, I mean, it's graffiti is just so out of hand now. I mean, the YMCA. It's got broken windows. It's got, I mean, it's never like this. There's so many broken windows now. Yeah. It never looked like that five years ago. Like, way out of here. So, yeah. We're going past, we're going past graffiti. Um, bus shelter, we already have. Community garden. Space, we already have plan more wildway connections. Um, in or out, yeah, um, clean up garbage we have throughout ward, um, improve access to centennial woods longer. That's more effort, yeah, longer, okay. You got to talk to you. <laughs> Maybe we won't get housing. We'll get just access to the woods. Um, okay, flowers next to the bus shelters. We have bus shelter stuff. I'll put it there. Talk about why so many uh, trash. 
I don't why know. Why so, many, why so many trash um, offers and companies that Pollard will that will offer to pick up your trash um, weekly, bi-weekly, monthly, how big a cart you want? And that's just like, how many trucks are going to go down our street? Mm -hmm. I think mm -hmm. they just really have to get that deterrence. Yeah. You know, that would be an out, but I think it's totally... I agree. I'm going to say it's an out, yeah. not to interrupt, yeah. but yeah. But it's a, a process. Mm -hmm. like, yeah. yeah. The city council can try to do it. They can do it. Okay. Yeah. 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 No, the city council. We tried to municipalize, yeah. Rock here. Nobody wants to like give up any territory. Rock here, Myers, all of them. It's like a, it's like the Sopranos. Um, <laughs> um, okay, graffiti removal we have. Um, Community uh, murals boards, community mural boards. Oh, I, think that's, I think that's got to be related to graffiti. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we're talking about around putting up boards where we can have artists or ourselves yeah. who will take stuff. Yeah. Do we think also like a community board where we like post what's going on? I think that needs to be on the top where top? it depends on scope. Yeah. yeah. Level. That's what I'm thinking too. Yeah. Um, that's a great idea, though. Uh, FYI, I did read in front porch forum that somebody is looking to do murals in our ward. Oh, okay. okay. Cool. Keep that. Keep that in mind. You want locals? This is going to get out of here. <laughs> All right, builds. I'm going to move us on, though. Build on options for Samanska Park events, um, which might be some old, old East End collaboration. I'm going to say in. Sure, yeah. It does it. That feel? <laughs> or maybe it depends. It depends on how many we're talking. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, in the process. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, I'm gonna say depends. Mutual aid projects, existing new possibilities. Um, Jake Schumann knows a lot about these. Yeah, um, mutual aid projects. Would be kind of a depends. I'm gonna say yeah. depends. Yeah, I'll say it depends. Sure. Okay, I like that. But, ooh, I'll get that. I swear. Um, okay. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so I have. Build up multi-use path to East Ave to connect, oh, to connect East Ave and um, Grove. Grove Street. Long term. Long term. How could I not long term? What do you mean? It's kind of long -term. We'll bang it out in a weekend. Um, <laughs> beautification of, on Riverside Ave, that was Sharon's, um, which I think we have flower bed stuff, but I think specifically on Riverside Ave, I would say that's in. I vote in. Yep. Okay. Um, all right, I'm gonna put that there. But it's in in. Um a community board. Oh, community band. <laughs> community oversight board. Community band or orchestra. Oh, cool. uh, I think that's an in. We are in that Pomeroy Park Cemetery. So yeah. I think that's an yeah. in. All right. I'm gonna say in. <laughs> uh community potlucks with singing or dancing or neighborhood musicians playing kind of yeah. like <laughs> in? yeah yeah kind of the same same line we're getting close folks um how are we doing on time <laughs> okay <laughs> go 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 sponsor pop-up village food retail goods cafe etc um maybe a little longer term yeah, <laughs> yeah. more ramble-esque mm -hmm. but kind of a similar idea um bake-off or meal bake-off or meal with homeless neighbors ties in with mutual aid ties in with mutual aid so i'm gonna say depends scope that's where i'm gonna go yeah um donation-based scavenger hunt a crossword one that would be dope um so like uh uh old folks home have done like a scavenger hunt where you have to go find for example 
$10 of locally sourced produce, go find the baked goods behind a tree, and then go find some clothing from a thrift store, bring your haul back, and then at the end of the scavenger hunt, you donate it to an organization. I'm going to say longer. Yeah. I, I biased the vote by putting it there, but yeah. good with longer. Yeah. That's really cool, though. Um, create walking path from Riverside Ave to North Ave or Mansfield, uh, North, Pros North Street, Mansfield Ave or North Prospect. I'm going to say longer. Yeah. Yep. Based on precedent there. Um, advocates to city council on a regular basis, showing up to city council meetings as part of like the MPA as a group, sending some representatives to make sure we always have a voice there. I'm going to say in, yeah. right? That's an easy, can do that. Um, desired paths to, uh, desired paths to build paths, to built paths. Yeah, so like taking desired paths and making them built. Us. That makes sense. I'm going to say longer. Yeah. What is that? What is that? Desired paths to build that. Like, so, like, taking desired paths to make them build, like, like putting stairs or whatever. And I'm assuming uh, where people are already walking, but it's not a path. Yeah. Okay. Um, walk the, oh, we're doing this. Walk the ward and ID obstacles for pedestrians, right? Isn't that where you were just sharing? So I'm going to say, I'm going to say in. We can expand on on that uh, with Dave. Build a pedestrian bridge ax pedestrian bridge across across the Winooski River. Yeah. I'm yeah. pro. I'm pro that. I'm pro that, but I'm gonna say out. Um sure. so let me do three here at a time. Um yeah. Build path, build path steps from Colchester Ave to Skamanska Park. I just said that wrong, but you know what I'm talking about. I think there was, a, there was another one that was that yeah. I'm gonna say I'm gonna say in or uh, <laughs> I'm gonna say out. Yeah. yeah. Oh. Uh, fix potholes. Could we do it ourselves? <laughs> out. I'm gonna say out, but. Yeah. yeah. We could do the flower, put the flowers in them. Yeah. Oh, flower beds after is good. Yeah, right in the potholes. Um, community garden. Yeah. Over there and beautification. Uh, fellowships plus outreach with our elder communities. Example, Fern Hill. In. In. Yeah. I'm gonna. Yeah. Depends scope, maybe. What did you say? About, say that again. So it says fellowships plus outreach with our elder communities. Example, Fern Hill. It's pretty quick. It's yeah. Pretty okay. Quick. No, I lied. It's in. How do we, how do we engage with them? Yeah. Yeah. Um, clean up graffiti. We have benches on greenways and community bike rides. Um, community bike rides in? Uh, in, sure. I'm seeing nods. Yeah, I'm hearing yeses. One in there. Okay. And yeah. You go, you go in a big group. Up clean graffiti, we have benches on greenways. Out. 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 It's going out. Um, we have graffiti, so I'm just putting that one down there. Um, but we do have it down. All right, let's do these last three I've been avoiding their paragraphs. Um, some way to integrate people in new new communities, example on Riverside, um, into the MPA, maybe hold meetings. So integrating folks from new American communities into the MPA, into our work here a little more. Yeah, like Salmon Run, and the ones on... Road, those big yeah, yeah. That feel in? We got two more, not to cut folks off. Report back on how traffic calming efforts are working. How well traffic calming efforts are working? 
Is this one of yours from your FPF post? Re report back on how the traffic calming measures, something traffic calming measures are working. Yeah, it's like a whole system of reporting data back to us. It's like a, it's like a whole thing. Unless it's specific or whatever. So I, that sounds in because like, yeah. But if it's, is it just who wrote this one? Do we know? If it's just reporting, oh yeah, Cheryl. Yeah, sorry, I wrote it. Yeah, the idea of, so for example, Darren was talking about, we've been reading about what's gonna be happening on East Avenue right. and some very specific things happening. And so as the months go on, do we feel like it's making a difference and just sort of staying in touch about that? I think that's in. Yeah. Yeah. Because that, yeah. that feels like we could even take it on the steering committee, like just getting somebody to come in the agenda. Um, Clean up some of the encampments on North Prospect Riverside, the Steep Woods area, as well as Graveyard. In, out, feels a little more out. I think it's in. I think we could do that in like a day. I, I, that should be out. Like, I, oh. wait, who said out? I did. Earhart, here. I, I don't think we should get involved in uh, cleaning up encampments. Uh, that's really not a neighborhood thing i think it's unfriendly uh towards um folks who are without housing uh many of them have no other options so you're saying an out yeah out. Yes. i agree i think it would I don't, think so. don't do it not that it takes a lot of effort yeah. Yeah. well yeah yeah here it, yeah it would, it would take a lot of effort in coordination with the city and potentially i'm hearing we don't have buy-in um okay so Determine whether an encampment is ab abandoned, and if it's abandoned, do something. So maybe that's a long term. Maybe, maybe that's a longer. Mutual aid kind of thing. Yeah. I'm gonna throw it in longer term, with that asterisk. Is that all right for now? With determining whether it's abandoned. Yeah, I can add it. Um, well, I'll add it before I take notes. I'm gonna take all these and type them up post this meeting, so that we have a record of this. And yeah. And remind me before we leave, too. Yeah. Can I just jump in? I don't know if um, I've been listening. I haven't heard any of the ones that came up from folks who are zooming in. Uh, I know the two that I posted in the Q&A did not get in. Um, so if, you know, you could just consider. I, I know it's Troy put in some something. I think Zariah put in something as well. Yeah, I totally forgot, Earhart. You're right. Let me pull it up right now. Thanks. Um, I don't see it in the... Google, Sam, is there stuff in the chat? Yeah. It, it's in the chat. I, I could not deal with the Google Doc on my phone. Sorry. The Google Doc minor minor just, not project no, okay. per se, just some, some thoughts. Yeah, so Sam, do you want to just read them out from the chat one at a time real quick? And we'll go one and we'll say in and out and I'll write it down on a sticky note quick. Does that sound good to folks? Yeah. yeah. I'll write them down. Oh, perfect. Good. So from Zariah, uh, an improved, and an improved pathway between Trinity Campus, River Wash, and College Square. I'm going to say out. Um, from Earhart, place the planters that are slash were in the Chase Street neighborhood. Uh, there used to be three, two got destroyed in the main ones in that street. Pause there, Sam, so Dave can catch up. So the first two Zariahs of building path sounds like some of the other ones we've had here. That's probably an out. And the second one was talking about flower bed construction, if I'm correct. And that's maybe more of a maybe you're in. Yeah. 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 Okay. By August. Yep. Yeah. So Earhart will be here and Z will be there. Um, Dave, could I actually grab those as you write them just to remember where they go? Thank you. Um, okay, next one, Sam. Flower boxes. Yeah. We'll say flower boxes here plus one. And we have traffic coming on here. Sam. That's it. Okay. Those are all great ones. Thank you all. Okay. So what we're going to do now is a little bit of abbreviated from how I thought because we have so many ideas. So we are going to do this. Um, 
Would it, it, would it, would it make sense to, to do something to sort of summarize where we are and continue in the next meeting? Because yeah. Yeah. we're sort of out of time. Yeah. yeah. Okay, that's perfect. That makes voting a lot easier. Unless people... Uh, that's good. Yeah, if you can get this enumerated on paper and send it out to everybody who wants to see it. Yeah. 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 Maybe some homework. Yeah. 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 So that's a great prompt. We have an email list now, and we could send out an email to vote on these. What do folks think about that? And then it forces you to receive our emails. I think if you send a list out you, and, and there's like five stickies with the same thing, you should make that clear. Yeah, yeah, list. yeah, yeah. I'll condense. I have a suggestion. Yes. There are probably only a half a dozen themes in there. Mm -hmm. If you think about it, there's flowers, there's, you know, traffic, there's bikes. I mean, clean up, you know, there's mm -hmm. beautification. Beautif beautif yeah. That's flowers, right? Yeah. So if, if so if you distill those down to three or four major categories like that, sure. then I think we could vote on a major category. You'll get direction. Do you agree that we vote next meeting or do you are you saying now? No, I, we can't do it now. I think okay. distilling you need to take the stuff, mm -hmm. distill it down. They call it affinity. Put all the stuff that's similar For together, sure. create the overarching um, you know, theme and then give us back the themes and just say we found you know, 17 ideas related to education, you know. For sure, for sure. So yeah, that's exactly what we'll do. We'll keep a record of everybody's thing. So we have the detail if we ever, for posterity's sake, want to look back. Right. I'll condense it out. We'll send an email. We won't vote via email to keep it simpler. We'll vote at the next meeting, but we'll send them out so folks can mull between now and right. next MPA. And we'll figure out the agenda and send that out as well. Also, I guess building on what Dave said, the... Uh... You know, if there are a dozen things that are under beautification, um, maybe one or two of those can be done in the near term. But sure. uh, those other things should be, we should keep on our list because they would be perhaps good candidates for the following good weather season. Definitely. Yeah, yeah. No, totally. I totally hear that. Um, and we'll incorporate that into the distilling um, slash recording. That sounds good. So. We got through a lot. We didn't get through everything, but I think that's really good and it'll give us a chance to breathe and, and figure it out. Um, okay, any last thoughts? Wrap up? Thank you all. Yeah. For sure. Can Thanks I for putting it in this direction. I think it's a good idea. May I say just one other thing and it will be on a positive note, okay? Um, it is about back to Jared Wood, because I learned of his death and I was just struck by it. I don't know him very well. He um, works a lot in my neighborhood in North Prospect Street. And I would talk with him often when I was gardening, my front garden. And he always admired my front garden and I was always honored. And he left an, an article for me uh, some months ago about a lovely plant that he thinks should be in my front garden. And I actually have that plant, but I had another one in the backyard. And so I said, thank you, Jared. I do like that plant. And I took that plant and I moved it into my front garden for him to see this season. It's blooming right now. And I wanna say, that I really appreciate how many suggestions there were from this community about how we beautify our neighborhood, about how we plant our gardens and we share our gardens with each other, because that's what happened between Jared and me. And I so appreciated that he would give a damn like that and that we could talk about it. So I'm just, I just kind of wanted to summarize the meeting by saying, this is a kind of a way to honor Jared, this that we're doing. That's all. Sure. And I invite you all to come see my garden. It's called uh, Helboris. And it, and it blooms. It's one of the first things that can poke its head through the snow. It's just a lovely plant. Are so, there some in this garden? Yeah. Yes, there are. 
So thank you very much. Um, thank you very much. And that uh, concludes our meeting.